This goofy contraption is called an ornithopter. It's a machine that mimics the flight of insects or birds. This particular design copies the flight of animals like bees or hummingbirds, wherein the wings flap back and forth in a symmetrical figure eight pattern. This motion allows lift to be generated during each stroke. By flapping the wings quickly enough, the aircraft is able to counter gravity and maintain a hover. Once in flight, the flight characteristics are similar to those of a helicopter. Yaw is controlled independently and can be used to rotate the aircraft about its axis. Pitch and roll can be used to back the aircraft in a direction to make it fly in said direction. Unlike a helicopter, the aircraft can decelerate very quickly when brought back to level. This ability allows it to be quite agile as it can rapidly change the direction of flight. Unfortunately, the aircraft experiences a lot of drag, and so it cannot reach the same airspeed for the same bank angle as a comparable helicopter. As a consequence, its maximum airspeeds are quite low. Despite this shortcoming, the machine can still perform vertical takeoff and maintain a very stable hover. At the heart of this machine is its wing. The design is very simple and consists of two props, one for a wing and one for a base plate. The wing is constrained to the base prop through a series of ropes. These ropes form a cross structure that mimic a ball socket joint. The ropes are extremely long so that the forces they generate depend only on the translation of the props and not on their relative angles. A set of hydraulics attached to the wing adjacent to the center of mass. These are at 90 degrees to one another and can rotate the wing at any angle. The pitch axis of the wing is constrained by one hydraulic and one elastic. At small angles and low torques, the hydraulic dominates the motion of the pitch axis. However, as the torque increases, the elastic begins to dominate, and the hydraulic becomes increasingly weaker and applies less torque on the wing. Ultimately, the hydraulic serves to control minor deflections of the wing, while the elastic limits the deflection as a whole. The combination of these constraints allows the wing to be flapped back and forth via the hydraulics. Yet the pitch axis is actuated passively and depends only on the forces acting upon it to determine its motion. When the pitch axis is tuned correctly, the wing can consistently generate lift during either stroke. This is all well and good, but how can one control the rotation of the aircraft? The pitch axis can be controlled by shifting the center of lift relative to the center of mass by varying the dihedral. Roll control can be accomplished by beating the wings at different amplitudes. In this case, we simply swing one wing in a larger arc as compared to the other. This results in one wing generating more lift than the other, and as a consequence, the center of lift shifts relative to the center of mass. This displacement, as in the case of variable dihedral, generates a torque that can rotate the aircraft. However, since the motion is asymmetric, the resulting reaction torque of the wings is not the same, and this causes the fuselage to rotate. The aircraft is forced to have a large moment of inertia about the yaw axis to absorb these asymmetries in torque. If the yaw inertia of the fuselage is too small, the asymmetric amplitude cannot be maintained, as the fuselage will simply rotate underneath the wings, and there will be no difference between the motion between the wings. To control the thrust or height of the aircraft, we can simply change the amplitude of both wings simultaneously. Larger amplitude means more thrust. The yaw axis can be controlled by varying the drag generated by the wings during each stroke. We can accomplish this by rotating the wings in opposite directions similar to ailerons in an airplane. 
The resulting bias causes the wings to have a large angle of attack when moving in one direction, and a smaller angle of attack when moving in the opposite direction. As a consequence, there is a difference in drag that generates a net force parallel to the direction of the flapping plane. Since the direction of this force is determined by the initial bias of the wings, if we bias the wings in different directions, there is a large torque that acts about the yaw axis. Being able to rotate the aircraft is one thing, but will it remain in place? The answer to that is most assuredly no. The aircraft is extremely unstable and won't remain in place, especially in a hover. Once it wanders off and gains some airspeed, it does seem to maintain some semblance of stability, but it still doesn't seem to maintain straight level flight. Be it from starting in rest or with some initial velocity, the aircraft will bank into the direction of motion and gain airspeed. The roll axis seems to be more unstable than the pitch axis, meaning the instability is asymmetric. We can circumvent these problems by forcing the aircraft to be stable. Needless to say, the results speak for themselves. This is accomplished by changing the control outputs with a PAD controller. In the pitch axis, we simply deflect the wings into the bank angle. In the roll axis, we increase the amplitude in the direction of the bank angle. By doing so, the aircraft will self-upright and remain stable overall. Superimposed on this motion is a damping factor, which deflects the controls to retard the angular velocity of the aircraft. We can observe many of these various effects by following the aircraft in flight. Greater amplitude causes the aircraft to rise. Notice that a deceleration forces the amplitude to increase momentarily. A first person view is about what one would expect. The aircraft shakes a lot, but it's surprisingly not that bad. Once we bank forward, the aircraft gains some airspeed and it quickly settles to a constant speed. It's from this perspective that we can tell that the aircraft actually flies quite slowly. We can also appreciate how quickly the aircraft can turn since it stops so fast. One of the drawbacks of this design is an instability that forms when we gain airspeed about the roll axis. The aircraft can sort of maintain stability because of the PID controller, but it's forcing the system. By following the aircraft directly, we can see how the leading wing begins to unload and lowers its angle of attack, while the trailing wing begins to increase its angle of attack. I presume this has to do with the elasticity of the pitch axis of each wing reacting to the relative airflow. A workaround this problem is to simply limit the airspeed the aircraft encounters in flight. It's not a solution, but it's a way to mask the problem.